we are going to look at look at it from two points of view. The first one is timing. Okay. What are the aspects of a digital gate that are related to timing? As you can see over here from this diagram of the basic CMOS logic gate, the output is going to be connected typically to some other logic gate. Now the input itself is essentially the gate terminals of two transistors which in turn because they are insulating essentially look like capacitances which means that the output in turn is going to look like some kind of a capacitance of its own. Okay. So what does that mean? Now we have a capacitance at the same time we also have this transistor has the ability to deliver a certain amount of current or to sink a certain amount of current right depending on which of the transistors is on okay so what does that mean it basically means that we can now look at this particular thing and think of it as i have a current source and i have a capacitance I want the output to go from 0 to the high potential which is VDD. Okay. So how would that happen if I had a constant current source? It would essentially say that because I is equal to C dV by dt, if I is constant, dV by dt would be constant and therefore I would just have something which constantly rises from 0 up to VDD. Of course, it, if I go purely by the equation it would not stop at VDD but we know that this is the practical situation is that once it reaches VDD the current cuts off, no further current flows and it stops over there. right? What this in turn means is that it takes a finite amount of time for the voltage at the output to go from 0 to VDD. How much is that time? It would be the total charge that needs to accumulate on the capacitance divided by the current that is going to flow through it. So C into VDD divided by I is an approximation of how much time it is going to take for the output to charge up. What that in turn means is If the output load capacitance, if it is high, it means that the CVDD by I is going to be high, it takes longer to charge. And conversely, if it is lo low, the output would charge faster. In other words, it would switch faster. Okay. So, this is one of the most important things that you need to keep in mind. The next part of it is what about I? Over here, we need to be a bit more careful. The voltage VDD. If this is higher, it usually means the current is also higher. So in other words, a transistor which, is, which has got a higher VDD will be able to deliver a higher current than a transistor that has a lower value of VDD. Okay. Whereas what we can see over here is as far as T is concerned, what happens when V increases? it would look as though we should be seeing 
something which is actually going to run slower that is t increases. But no, that is not exactly what happens because this one increases even more dramatically than the increase in V, right. If you go back and look at the behavior of CMOS transistors, you would know that the current would be expected to go as VDD minus VT the whole square, which is why what we would end up with is that the time actually decreases if the voltage increases keeping the output capacitance the same, right. So to quickly sum this up, what we can say is for CMOS circuits in general, the higher the value of the capacitance, the slower the circuits, okay. From the point of view of what we are studying in this course, it means that if you have more hardware, if you have more parallel systems, your circuits are likely to run slower. The second part of it is what happens if I increase the voltage. In this case, if I increase the voltage within limits, you will find that the current increases and therefore the circuit will take less time to switch and will actually run faster, okay. So it looks as though reducing the capacitance is good. Increasing the voltage, it is not so clear. Increasing the volta voltage does make it look as though it would make the circuit run faster. So the next thing that we need to understand is what happens when the voltage is actually increased. It turns out it has an impact on the power, right. So that takes us to the next aspect of what we really want to understand as far as the properties of uh, digital circuits is concerned, which is the power consumption. Once again, going back to the idea of a uh, circuit that is switching, essentially what we have is, we can think of it as a current source from VDD that is driving some output capacitance, okay. Let us say that the output is going from 0 to VDD over some duration of time, okay. What we would like to understand in this case is what is the total energy extracted from the source and when I say source what I mean is the VDD source, okay. In order to understand that, let us look at what is actually happening over here. There is a certain current I that is flowing into a capacitance and over time is going to charge that capacitance from 0 to VDD. Initially, I am assuming that the capacitance is at 0, okay. So the energy is going to be given by integral of the power dissipated or the power drawn from the circuit over time from 0 to delta T, right. And what is the power being delivered by the source? It is going to be equal to VDD which is the supply of the source multiplied by I DT where I is the current that is being delivered by the source. Now how do we handle this? Can I make approximation saying I is constant? We do not really need to. What we can clearly understand over here is that the I is actually given by C dV by DT right, assuming that the capacitance is a constant, which basically implies that I dt could be replaced by C dv in this equation, right. So by changing variables, essentially what we end up with is at time 0, this corresponds to V equal to 0 and at time delta t, this corresponds to V equal to V dt. So let us put that in and say that we are essentially going to uh, say the energy becomes an integral from 0 to VDD of VDD into C dV, right, which can be evaluated to C VDD squared, okay. This is the total energy. drawn out of the source, 
okay now from basic physics we know that if a capacitor is charged to vdd the energy stored on the capacitor is half c vdd square okay so what we have is a total amount of c vdd squared was drawn out of the source half of that half c vdd squared is still stored on the capacitor it's not lost what happened to the remaining half c vdd squared it has just basically been dissipated through the pmos transistor that was used in order to charge the capacitor okay and the second part would essentially be that same capacitor would then go through a discharge cycle where the entire ec the charge stored on the capacitor would go down to zero so in other words if i had let's say an inverter driving some kind of logic gate with a capacitance of c then what i would find is in the time that the inverter takes to go let's say that the input goes low and then high and the output correspondingly goes high and then low a total amount of energy c vdd squared would be dissipated in the two transistors so every time the gate goes through an up and down cycle like this we would find that c vdd squared is dissipated if the gate then has some f cycles per second then we can multiply by the number of cycles per second in order to get the energy dissipated per second which is nothing but the power i'm calling this the average power dissipation assuming that the f itself is the average number of cycles per second right the important thing to keep in mind is rather than worrying about this formula of why you have a certain amount of uh, you know directly saying cv square f as the power dissipation it is more important to keep track of the fact that how many times is the circuit or that gate toggling how many times is it switching right it doesn't matter whether it is done over a period of 1 second or 1 day or 1 year if it toggles some n number of times then n into cv squared is or rather n when i say uh, toggles it basically a complete up down cycle if it has n cycles then n into cv squared is the total amount of energy that it would dissipate and the therefore the average power would be basically that divided by the amount of time within which that switching has occurred okay so to summarize why do we need to worry about all of these things we know that digital systems are used in order to implement the hardware that we are uh, interested in there are two main costs associated with implementing digital systems in cmos technology as we understand it one of them is timing and over here what we find is that if the capacitance is low the circuit can run fast capacitance high the circuit will be slow voltage low the circuit would be slow voltage high circuit would be fast as far as power is concerned once again we have come up with a formula cv squared f that involves both the capacitance as well as the voltage capacitance low 
power consumption is low capacitance is high power consumption is high voltage low c v squared right potentially very low and voltage high could mean very high right i'm using the words very in a very loose sense of course over here but you get the idea it's the quadratic uh, uh, effect versus just the linear effect of the voltage on the timing or the power so as far as a designer is concerned these things are now contradictory right i can have a fast high power consuming circuit or i can have a slow but very low power circuit right as far as the capacitance at least is concerned things are good everybody says reduce the capacitance but there might actually be situations where you even want to trade that off you are willing to accept a marginal or even a significant increase in capacitance if it turns out that that means you can therefore run the circuit slower at a lower voltage and therefore at a significantly reduced total power consumption okay these kind of equations which have the contradictory requirements are what makes the design game the most interesting thing at the end of the day